It's easy to groom a child because an adult always has a position of power over a child. I am Anthony Zankis. I am an expert in the fields of sexual violence, family violence, and trauma. It's really hard to just look at somebody and say, that person's a predator. What you have to do is look at the behaviors and listen to the things that they say. We met before. It's Great. hard to forget those eyes. Look at those Great. eyes. Yeah. Look at them. Can I go with Jess alone? Very, oh. Very clear warning signs are adults who ignore children's boundaries when it comes to touching, kissing, holding, or tickling. They will engage in those behaviors with the child and continue them despite the fact that a child squirms away or pulls away or voices any sort of discomfort verbally or non-verbally. In a couple of weeks, we are going to have a new president inaugurated. I understand everyone here, I believe, voted for the Biden-Harris ticket. Georgia has not flipped blue in 28 years, and black women have largely been credited with helping make that happen. What are your top issues that you want to see this administration tackle in this upcoming year? In the United States of America, black women are dying at a disproportionate rate. There is a level of historic trauma in the black community. And black women have been the ones to nurse this country from the inception of the United States of America. And for black women to be dying in America is a slap in the face. I was tearing up earlier. <laughs> Could we really be at the precipice of a new administration that's going to actually make a change, that it's really going to happen this time? Because like you say, black women, have been the backbone. We've always gone and voted. We've always marched. We've always boycotted when we needed to. We're the ones that are, you know, the most supportive of it all. And it's like, when will we have our voices heard and be taken seriously? I hope that uh, under the Biden administration, we'll re return to some sense of decency. Shalom. I'd like to give all under glory and praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh by Shimon Kakodash, like a double honors to our apostles and elders, great millstone. Salutations to our sister Akiyam, pushing this word out across the four corners of the world. And as you just saw from this previous video of a group of so-called black women was being credited for their votes for Biden. And as you know, with the so-called women of our nation, the biblical Israelites, that spiritual connection with them and the tabernacle of Edom it's like a dynamic duo, and that spiritual connection goes right back into the book of Genesis between the serpent and Eve. And we already know through the spirit that Eve was beguiled by that serpent through his subtility. And it's no different in today's time how this so-called white man is still utilizing his subtle, devious ways upon the mass majority of our women. Because the women of our nation, they're the majority of the ones they are trusting into the science of Esau Edom, standing in these long lines and putting their energy and taking you know what. So this is that same generation coming back into the process called reincarnation. When our people left ancient Egypt, we fled into the wilderness. And you had majority of our people wanting to go back to ancient Egypt and live that so-called lavish life, a life of conveniency. So it's no different today's time in spiritual Egypt referring to America how you still have a lot of our people want things to return back to so-called normal, go back to the so-called pre-pandemic days, hoping and praying that Biden makes America a safe, better place for our people to thrive in. So this is that same disloyal generation that put their strength into Pharaoh instead of their true power source, Yahweh Bashim Abishai. So this is Isaiah 30 and 1, woe to the rebellious children. Woe means destruction to two-thirds of our people who are considered rebellious. They are disloyal. They are unruly and disobedient. Said Yahweh Bashim Abishai, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So they put the covering of the fashion of this current world, and we already know through spirit that the earth is given to the hand of the wicked, referring to the tabernacle of Edom. So our people are well pleased and satisfied how the way of things in America are running. No matter how wicked and defiled it is, as long as they have some type of way living an easy, carefree type of lifestyle. So with that way, way of thinking, 
you're adding sin upon sin, and that's provoking you. How about Shemel Rashad to bring more wrath, judgment upon two thirds of our people? Verse two, that walk to go down into Egypt. So this is spiritually how the majority of our people in today's time, they're still voting. They're still putting their energy into campaigning, promotion for this so-called white man who is your main biblical enemy, according to the book of Psalm, the 83rd chapter. You hold fault against us as the prophets for prophesying the downfall of this place of our captivity, America, and talk about a new upbringing that we are going to be in sovereignty as the Israelites. So majority of our people, they still want to spiritually walk down to Egypt. That's why it stated in the book of Numbers, when our people was in the wilderness, how they remember the garlic, the onions, the cucumbers, the melons, the fish that they did eat freely. So within this setup, as a lot of our people are seeing that this place of America is spiraling down, they want things to return back to normal and go back to the pre-pandemic days. How gas was at a good price. You did not get overtaxed. You got more of a bargain concerning grocery shopping, your government assistance, your 401k, your savings account, and the list goes on. So it says that walk to go down to Egypt and have not acts in my mouth to strengthen themselves and the strength of Pharaoh. So the modern day Pharaoh is considered as Joe Biden within this establishment of America. Because if you go to the word president, it goes into first servant, meaning that Joe Biden is the first servant into the plans of the international bankers and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. So the mass majority of our people are putting a heavy vibration upon themselves by putting their energy into the shadow of Egypt, referring to America instead of Yahweh Bashim al -Bashai. So right there alone, we already know that Yahweh Bashim al is a jealous power. So by you putting more energy into something else, something that he created, that's doing nothing but provoking him to more anger and wrath. Then our people have the nerve to question the Heavenly Father while all these horrific judgments are happening upon our people in these last days. Not considering your ways and your actions that you are making him more jealous and provoking him to more anger. Verse 3, therefore should the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. So all that energy our people are standing into the long lines, voting, campaigning for these devils, trusting into the science. You never will have thought that this same president, through the authorization of Yahweh Bashim al Shai, is going to lead this country into World War III, the end of all wars. And on top of that, he's going to draft these same individuals that were standing firmly for him in these voting polls. So that's why it says, therefore, should the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. And that links up with Isaiah, the 28th chapter, how majority of our people are going to find out within these last days that they have made that covenant, going to their agreement or a promise, some type of alliance with death. And that's referring to the man of sin, the son of perdition, Esau, Edom. Then through all your adversities, a.k.a. Jacob's trouble, that's when you're going to find out that you have made lies your refuge and under falsehood have you hid yourselves by putting your strength or your energy into Pharaoh and trusting into the shadow of Egypt. And that's spiritual how two thirds of our people put their strength into Pharaoh because you look into the word strength on the blue letter, it goes into a place for safety, refuge and protection. So by you standing in those long lines, campaigning and voting and the word vote goes into to make a vow. So you're placing your pledge of allegiance unto the vessel of dishonor and not unto Yahweh Bashim al -Bashai. And this is Isaiah 33 and 22. For the Lord Yahweh Bashim al -Bashai is our judge. The Lord Yahweh Bashim al -Bashai is our lawgiver. The Lord Yahweh Bashim al -Bashai is our king. He will save us, not Esau, not these pseudo leaders amongst our people who claimed that they had a better way for our people and gave them nothing but broken promises. So yeah, how about Shema Shah are the only ones supposed to have our popular votes and definitely not no Joe Biden. And the crazy thing about it within this setup, your votes do not even count. And Franklin D. Roosevelt, he came out with a quote and stated that, that presidents are selected, not elected, meaning that these presidents are appointed by the international bankers who are the heads of the tabernacle of Edom. They fund both sides of the wars. They have control opposition. They appoint who's going to be in turn for president within these different countries. And again, that's by the authorization of Yahweh Bashim al by allowing Esau to tap into his blessing. 
So like I was saying earlier, how this is that same generation coming back into the process called reincarnation, fulfilling those same wicked deeds and actions that they did aforetime. Like you read into the book of Second Ezra, the first chapter, the Most High was boasting to our people all the benefits that he did for us as a people within the wilderness and how we overcame ancient Egypt by the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. But you still had a mass majority of our people were still murmuring and wanted to go back to ancient Egypt. So this is an account when Yahweh Shah is about to get ready to get crucified. You still had a lot of our people, which is that same generation coming back, and they did not want Yahweh Shah over them. But only within this time frame, the modern Pharaoh. Within this time frame, that's referring to Caesar. And that Caesar at that time frame was Tiberius Augustus. So this is John 19 and 12. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him, referring to Yahweh Shai. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever making himself a king, speak it against Caesar. Verse 13. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Yahweh Shai forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. Verse 14. And it was the preparation of the Passover in about the sixth hour, and he said unto the Jews, Behold, your king. Verse 15. But they cried out, referring to those wicked Jews within the crowd, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no key but Caesar. And the more that you read into the scriptures, the more that you find out that the prophets worst enemies were their own people. And it's no different in this day of time in the last of the last days. How your own people are the worst. So when Yahweh Bashim Shah really allow his vessel dishonor referring to Esau Edom to come down upon our people that great wrath, he's really going to get them charged to do so. Because majority of our people who put their votes, their energy, their strength into Pharaoh by voting, by trusting into the system, by partaking into the image of the beast, they're not considering that this same president is about to lead this country into World War III. And before we get to those steps, it's going to be drastic measures that he placed upon the inhabitants of America. He just stated within his last speech, it's a coming new world order. And Esau's new world order is definitely not going to be in the benefit of you Israelites. But majority of our people are going to have a hard way finding out. And within this next video, you're going to see the wickedness of Joe Biden. So I brought this out. You all was edified by this video. You all stay strong. Keep pushing forward. Shalom. Most adults take those cues and realize, oh, they don't want to be hugged or tickled right now. And that's fine. Sex offenders and predators just plow right through it. Another is sexualizing a child by talking about dating or their bodies in a way that would not be appropriate for their age. How old are you, 17? Oh, six. You're turning 11. You're Five beautiful. Years. Just remember, no dates to your 30. No dates to your 30 years old. In my field, we often say that child sex predators don't just groom children, they groom families and communities. Seeing these behaviors in an adult doesn't mean that adult is a predator or would ever harm a child. But what it does do is it sets that child up to grow up in a world where they view these violations of personal space as normal. And that's unacceptable. Everyone, regardless of their gender expression or age, deserves to walk through this world with their physical boundaries intact and not living in fear that they'll be violated. Offenders have depended on not only the silence of their victims, but our silence. If we allow children the permission to say no or speak up for them when they can't, we're going to go a long way in preventing so much harm. We will be on Capitol Hill. Yes. We'll be showing up. We will be showing out. Mm -hmm. We will be here. We're not going anywhere. And it has been truly relieving to see that there's still a, a chance for us to make change. We said we wanted our voice heard and it happened. I think that's been truly like a special moment of realization. Is this your king? Huh? Is this your king?